simply by breathing you give rise to feelings in the body. And so you have the choice what kind of breathing you're going to engage in. Engaging that gives rise to painful feelings or gives rise to pleasant feelings. There's no reason to give rise to painful feelings through the breath. And there's enough pain in life otherwise. And if you're going to be able to understand things, you have to have a safe haven where you don't feel threatened. So you can watch things as they're happening and not feel disoriented or threatened by what's, what's appearing. So you have to know how to give rise to pleasant feelings in the present moment. This is an important skill. Sometimes people will say, you don't try to do anything at all, just be with whatever is arising, as if you weren't already causing things to arise. Simply by, still, by deciding to being still, you're causing something to happen. So you might as well cause good things to happen. Someone else says that the more you try to change things inside, the worse they get. Well, that's simply because you don't know how to change things properly. It's like someone sitting down at the piano and trying to play, and all they get is weird sounds out of the piano. And they say, well, the more I try to play, the weirder it sounds. I better stop. There's a training that's involved. You start with simple things like the in-breath and the out-breath. And then you get to more subtle things like the way you think, the perceptions you hold in mind. These too will have an impact on the kind of feelings you have. And so in the course of the practice, we want to learn how to give rise to pleasant feelings, how to use these feelings as a foundation for the mind so that we can do further work inside. So it's not simply a matter of being with whatever naturally arises, because your nature is to cause things to happen. The mind is an active principle. So you learn how to use that active principle in a skillful way. Work with the breath. If you find that working with the breath in a particular way doesn't work, you get back up a bit and try something else. In the sense that when you breathe in, the breath energy is going down, doesn't feel right, well try it going up. If going up doesn't feel right, try it going down. There's lots to play with. And as you're playing around with the energy in the body this way, the mind begins to settle down with a sense of interest. Not simply because you force it down, but because you find that something interesting really is happening here, that you can change the feeling tone in your body, you can change the feeling tone in your mind. And with practice you can learn how to do it skillfully. So there are times when you actively interfere and other times when you just want to sit and watch. But it's all part of this program of learning how to be observant of how you're fabricating feelings, how you're creating feelings. Because in this way that you get more and more sensitive to the workings of the mind. And this is how concentration practice leads to insight. In fact, it contains insight as part of the practice. That's when the practice stays most stable.